But it's important to note that all of this trending towards Trump happened before you had several nights on end of violent rioting in Philadelphia. And as even Don Lemon and Joe Biden themselves have basically acknowledged, this is affecting the polls. The riots are causing voters to go toward Trump because they believe that he will handle it better than Joe Biden will. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. We are going to give you an electoral college preview, and I'm really excited about this because I'm a giant nerd, and I live for this stuff. I really like looking at you know what, what polls are doing, what the state's going to go. Um, I, there's probably people better at this than I am, but I'm going to give you I'm going to give you the best that I can do, and especially because I have been keeping a very very close look on the polls. Now I want to go ahead and give you a preview. This is the electoral college map that I put up uh, about, let's see, this was what, two weeks ago, I think? So, yeah, so you can see there that Joe Biden wins this one, and it's very, very close, 278. But there are several swing states that we're going to look at, because these are how I marked them two weeks ago. And the swing states that we're going to look at that are within the margin of error that could go either way, because the other states other than these really, I mean, it's pretty much a done deal. It would be shocking to find out that somebody else picked up one of these states. The swing states right now are Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, Texas, Arizona, Nevada, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. So those are your toss-up states. And that's how I predicted it two weeks ago, but new information has come out very recently and I want to go over why I picked the states the way that I did and what I think it's what effect I think it's going to have. So let's look at the first toss-up state, Florida. Now, Florida is interesting because Florida is essentially Trump's second home. I mean, yes, he's a New Yorker. And whenever you think about Donald Trump, you think about New York. That's just part of his personality. He's a real estate mogul in the biggest city in the world, or not the biggest population-wise, but like... It's the economic center of the universe right now. Uh, so because of that, I mean, you think about that when you think about President Trump, but he also has extremely expansive business deals in Florida. He spends a lot of his time in Florida and did even before he became the president. And so because of that, Florida has always kind of been his second home when it came to his primary and the GOP in Florida the last time in 2016. He even beat Marco Rubio, who's from Florida. And so this is a state that Trump does have several important advantages in. His primary disadvantages, though, are that when it comes to Florida, there is at least, this is the way that it shook out in 2016, it wound up being close anyway because there is a pretty substantial minority vote. And there are a lot of snowbirds that move in from the Northeast that happen to vote very liberally, and, and Florida has been trending purple for a long time now. It's been a true swing state for a while. But here are some of the telltale signs. First of all, Governor Ron DeSantis basically ran as a clone of President Trump, kind of the same way we were talking about Tommy Tuberville running as a clone for Trump in the Senate. I mean, he basically did exactly the same thing. His election became a contest of, well, I like Trump more than everybody else, so that's why you should vote for me. And to his credit, it was narrow, but he did win. And so that says a lot about how much Trump is favored, or at the very least, how much Trump is tolerated in Florida. And this is about as true toss-up as anything is going to get. Your two most recent polls there are Trump plus one and Biden plus one. So, I mean, it is neck and neck. Florida is about as much in contention as any state you're going to get. But here's the thing, and this is going to be a rule that is a recurring theme throughout the states that I'm looking at. Typically speaking, not always, but typically speaking, historically, in these really close states, 
whoever has the most enthusiasm wins that one. And I'm not talking about the candidate themselves, even though that would be a very easy contest if that were the case. I mean, Joe Biden's barely alive at this point. But if it were an enthusiasm contest, it's an enthusiasm contest between their supporters. There are a handful of really enthusiastic Biden supporters, but there ain't many of them. There are a lot of people that really don't like Trump and want to vote for Biden because they don't like Trump. But as far as a lot of enthusiasm, people that are just like chomping at the bit to go out and campaign for Biden, those people are few and far between. And so because of that, in this race, it's pretty clear who has the more enthusiastic base, which means that in these really, really close states, I think that it, the smart money is to, if it's a true toss-up, if it really is tied and it's basically neck and neck, you give the edge to Trump. And that's because he just has the more enthusiastic people, and those are the people that are more likely to crawl over glass to vote for the guy. They're the people that are far less likely to just, oh, I forgot that the election was today, and so I forgot to go out and vote. The people that are flying giant Trump flags behind their dually are not going to do that. And so that enthusiasm does translate into votes. Is it enough to swing like a state where Biden is winning by eight points and it's traditionally blue? Probably not. But if it's a true toss-up, that does make a difference. And here is the case in Florida. Very, very tight race. And because of that, I'm calling Florida for President Donald Trump. Georgia. Our neighbors, just like Florida, right here in Alabama, Georgia, I don't really see Georgia going blue just yet because that's been the topic of conversation. Georgia's going blue. I mean, look, Stacey Abrams almost won. Well, she didn't really almost win. I mean, yes, it was closer than a lot of people were expecting it to be, but it was still a pretty conclusive victory by Governor Kemp there. And so, Governor Kemp, again, he didn't run quite as much as a Trump clone as DeSantis did, but he's a pretty pro-Trump guy. And he won his race and did pretty well there, especially in an off year between elections. And so this year where turnout is bigger and states tend to trend more the way that they do traditionally, and Georgia traditionally is a red state, or at least has been for the past couple of decades. And so because of that, I don't see Georgia as going blue yet. Still a concern, still something that we might have to look at on the horizon. I just don't see it happening this election cycle. The most recent polls here are Trump plus two, Trump plus one, Trump plus one, and then Biden plus two. And remember, I'm going most recent to further back. And so the, the most recent three are all Trump by at least one, if not two points. And because of that, I, I think that Trump winds up winning Georgia, and I don't even think it winds up being all that close now, it could wind up being close. And the weird thing about Georgia is if one candidate doesn't get more than 50% of the vote, then they have a runoff. Now, I think if a runoff happens, that definitely swings in Trump's favor because it's a special election. It's not happening on election night. And with something like that, generally your more enthusiastic supporters wind up winning it. And so because of that, I think that Trump easily wins Georgia if it goes into a runoff. But I don't really see that even being an issue. I think he probably winds up getting not way over, but slightly over 50% of the vote in Georgia. I, I just don't see it turning blue this year. It might turn blue in the next election cycle or even the one after that, but the polls just indicate that that is not the case this year. North Carolina. So in North Carolina, I don't really think that that's, this is their year to go blue either. I think they're closer to it than Georgia, but I don't think that they wind up going blue this year. It is more liberal than Georgia, but still, there's a lot of rednecks there that really love their guns and love their Bible. And so I know that that's a weird way to put it, but it's North Carolina. Have there been a lot of hipsters move in from other horrible blue states that tax them out of life and limb and they move and then somehow think that, Oh, why aren't we getting all this free stuff? We should vote for Democrats here and do exactly the same thing that led them to leave their boneheaded, horribly run blue state in the first place. Yeah, that is happening in North Carolina. I get that. But it's not going to happen this year based on all the polls that I've seen. It may happen soon, 
but the entire state is not like the big cities in North Carolina. You're, you're just not going to see that just yet. May happen in the near future, and I think it's closer than Georgia, but I think it winds up going for President Trump. The most recent polls there are Trump plus four, a tie, Trump plus one, and Trump plus two. You don't even have really a good recent poll that says Biden wins by a significant margin. So North Carolina, I think, winds up going for Trump. Texas, a state that is kind of trending blue. Remember that Texas has some of the largest cities in the country. Houston, San Antonio, these are huge Democrat strongholds. Now, the state of Texas itself is ginormous, and that's part of the reason that despite having these gigantic major metropolitan areas like Houston, like Dallas, that go really far blue, that Texas has been reliably red for a very long time. But here's the problem. You're starting to see urban sprawl. You're starting to see those giant major metropolitan areas be able to swing the vote because less people are living out in the country and you've got more people moving into the city from states like California, uh, like Oregon, like Washington. You're seeing some of these West Coast states, people from them, leave those horribly run states and move to Texas. And so you are seeing a swing blue. Austin is a, a big example. That's a very, very blue city. So this is a concern. Remember that Ted Cruz nearly lost to Bob Francis O'Rourke in his last Senate election. Ted freaking Cruz, one of the best senators in the Senate, almost lost to Bob Francis, who's a horrible candidate by every considerable measure. So, yeah, Texas going blue is a genuine concern. I'm not dismissing that. But again, I don't think it goes blue yet this year. I will say this, though. If Donald Trump loses Texas, he's just lost. Like, th there's no way to make up that ground. I don't think that it's going to happen. I think that it's going to come out for Trump, and I think it's actually not going to wind up being all that close. But <laughs> if, if Trump did somehow lose Texas, like, the election's over, you might as well... If that happens, because I'm going to be doing an election live stream tomorrow night, if we're looking at the map and all of a sudden I see that Texas goes blue... I will turn off my stream right then and there. I was like, well, guys, tr Biden won the election. See you later. I, I don't even have to, I, I don't even have to see all the other states. If we were, if Texas is the first state to report and they report that Biden won, I'm done. So I, I just don't see that as being a big deal. But the most recent polls from Texas are a tie, Trump plus one, Trump plus four, a tie, and Trump plus five. There's just very little chance that that Texas is actually going to go for Joe Biden. Arizona. Now, Arizona has been a red state pretty much my entire life. They haven't always been, but my entire life, they've been a pretty reliable red state. But if you know anything about the background with Senator Martha McSally, Martha McSally, who has a fantastic story, and I don't understand why she is not more liked in her own state. She's got a fantastic backstory, a veteran, I mean, injured in battle, Purple Heart recipient, all of that. And somehow she lost a Senate election there. And then when she did lose, and the other person had to vacate their seat, then she was, uh, Martha McSally was appointed to replace her. So the person that already lost an election wound up replacing them as the senator. I don't know if that was the right call or not, but I do know that that left a bad taste in a lot of Arizonans' mouths. And so this is the reason that she's very vulnerable right now. She's already lost the Senate election in the state of Arizona once. It wouldn't be surprising if she did it again, especially since she was not elected to be in the office that she is sitting in right now. And so because of that, she doesn't have the usual advantages of an incumbent. That spells problems in the Senate for the GOP. But you also have to consider that there is a revenge vote factor. And because of that, you could potentially see a whole bunch of Democrat voters come out and vote specifically because they want to get Martha McSally out of office. And those people are also ones that are very likely to vote for Joe Biden. Now, in a state that has been openly in contention for several weeks now, and it's known that Arizona is it's kind of a question mark as to which way it'll go, I think the revenge vote is less of a factor because that tends to come out later as kind of a surprise after polling, not during polling. And since we've been seeing it during polling, it's less of a, a shock factor there. And there are going to be a whole lot of people that vote for 
Republicans that are like, okay, we actually have to get our act together and get out and vote this time. So that has less of an impact because of the circumstances surrounding it. But there will be a revenge factor vote, and I don't know if it's going to be enough to turn Arizona blue, but it very well could. However, these are the most recent polls. Trump plus two, Biden, or, sorry, Biden plus two, Trump plus four, Biden plus six, Biden plus four, Trump plus three. Now, looking at that spread, that does favor Biden. But it is a close race. It's close enough that I think you could consider it a toss-up. And because of that, like I said, since it's a toss-up and most of the enthusiasm is in the Trump camp, I think you got to give this one to Trump. But if he squeezes out Arizona, it is going to be by the skin of his teeth. That's my prediction. Nevada. Nevada is interesting because if, tr if Trump were to be transformed into a state, like Trump the human being became a state, he would pretty much look like Nevada. It's known for casinos and hookers. Like, I mean, th let's just be honest. If you, if you were to translate him into state form, that's what people would think the state would look like. So it's, it's weird that this should be a state that, I don't know, resonates with Trump for some reason, but it doesn't. It didn't vote for him last time, and it probably won't go for him this time. He's just not looking good there. The recent polling there shows Biden plus two, Biden plus two, Biden plus six, Biden plus two, Biden plus six. That's a tall, tall order to overcome a deficit like that in polling. And because of that, I think Trump winds up losing this one. Nevada goes blue again. He didn't win it last time. I don't see any reason to think that he would win it this time. In fact, the polls are even worse for him in this state now. Let's look at Minnesota, the home of Ilhan Omar. So keep that in mind when we're going through these polls. Look, people in the Trump camp are convinced this state is in play. I don't understand why. Now, they have internal polling. And sometimes pollsters do not make their internal campaign polling public. So maybe there's something there that I'm missing. Maybe there are tea leaves that they are reading that I just don't have access to. And because of that, I don't understand why they think it's in play. And it really is. But I have to go based on the available information that I have right in front of me. And the recent polling there is Biden plus five, Biden plus three, and Biden plus five. And what's important is that Biden plus three, that is a pollster named uh, Trafalgar, I believe is the way to pronounce their name. And traditionally, just looking at all the polls and looking at different polls in different states, they tend to be very Trump friendly. Their polls, for whatever reason, through their methodology or whatever, they tend to get a more pro-Trump number than their other polling colleagues. And so the most pro-Trump polling group is still giving a plus three Biden victory? No. Nah. Minnesota is not in contention so far as I'm concerned. It's referred to as a toss-up state. This one's going blue. I'm calling it right now. I would be very, very shocked if Minnesota wound up going red based on everything that I've seen. Iowa. Now, Iowa is the epitome of a heartland state. It's right there in the breadbasket. You got a lot of good old-fashioned, conservative, Leonard Skinner loving Americans in Iowa. And you've also got a lot of old-school blue dog Democrats that they just, they're Democrat because they have been for generations, you know, living on the family farm. And uh, my great-great-great-granddaddy was a Democrat, and they don't really know why, they just know that their whole family has been Democrats forever. And so it's interesting because of all those dynamics, and I could go into more explanations on Iowa, but you have a fascinating blend there. And, and Iowa is one of the very few real swing states. I mean, almost every single year. And that's part of the reason we have the Iowa caucus there is because it's interesting and it's a pretty good indicator of how the country as a whole is going to go. But Iowa, they have a very conservative governor in Kim Reynolds, they have the, fee, the fifth least restrictive shutdown and the 24th, and are only 24th in deaths per capita. So they got the fifth least restrictive out of all the states in the country. That's how conservative their governor is. 
and they're about middle of the pack when it comes to death, death to capita, and so you're really not going to get a whole lot of people making the argument that the governor is doing a bad job. I just don't see this one going for Biden. I think it's close, but the recent polls are Trump plus two, Trump plus one, Trump plus seven, Trump plus one, and Biden plus four. I, I don't see this one going for Biden. I'm calling Iowa for President Trump. Wisconsin. Can Trump win there again? Because remember, he did shock everybody and win there in 2016. Remember, Wisconsin is the cradle of progressivism. And so just like there is a, a tradition of republicanism, for example, in, the, in certain states, uh, oddly enough, back in the day, California was a big Republican stronghold. But, you know, you'll have a tradition of a particular party in a state Remember that Wisconsin is the cradle of progressivism, and so it's difficult for any Republican to win. But the recent polls there are Biden plus three, Biden plus eight, Biden plus 10, Biden plus 11, Biden plus one, Biden plus eight. Biden's got this one. I'd love to see Trump, you know, win another one in Wisconsin and just blow everybody's mind. But Trump has, the areas and demographically where he has actually improved, interestingly enough, is he has gotten better with minority voters and he has lost rich, white, conservative suburbanites. And by rich, I just mean anywhere from upper middle class to, to, to very wealthy. And because of that, that's most of Wisconsin. And so the demographics in Wisconsin are against him. He's not going to win a lot of those soccer moms like he did in 2016. Not that he was doing great with them anyway, but you know what I'm saying. Like uh, the, the stereotypical white suburban family, Trump has lost a lot of those voters. And because Wisconsin is an incredibly white state, this is one of the reasons that he's just not doing well there. And the Biden campaign also has been adamantly uh, campaigning there because they don't want to repeat the mistake that Hillary Clinton did by basically ignoring ignoring Wisconsin and acting like it was all wrapped up. Because of that, I think that Biden winds up winning this one, and I don't think it's really even that close. Michigan. Can Trump pull off winning in Michigan again? This one, I think, is a slightly more in contention. So Gretchen Whitmire, arguably the worst governor in the entire country. Her shutdowns have been ridiculous, draconian, and even people that aren't really following the science all that closely can look at some of the boneheaded measures that she put forward and are like, that doesn't make any sense. Like when she was having stores wall off their gardening section. Were they afraid that coronavirus is growing in the miracle grow? Like, what's going on here? But anyway, you've had that going on in, in Michigan. I think that that is going to play a role. You're going to have a lot of people that are in Michigan that can't stand the governor that want to go out, and if nothing else is a giant middle finger to her, would love to see Michigan go red. But I don't know if it's going to be enough. I mean, I get it. Michiganians, however you say that, there's a lot of them that love their guns, they love their lake house, which is another reason why Whitmire's policies went over so terribly. You couldn't even... You literally couldn't drive to another property that you own. So if you're, and this is a very common thing in Michigan, if you have a house in Detroit, but you also have a lake house upstate, it was against the law for you to drive to your own house with your own family, even if you weren't bringing anybody else with you. And since that's a very common thing in Michigan, that ticked off an awful lot of Michigan residents. I mean, it's a giant lake state, and so you can see why that would be really, really dumb. So maybe that plays a factor and maybe it's enough to push Trump over the top. There's a whole lot of people in, in Michigan that are very similar to people in Alabama and Georgia and Mississippi that, you know, just have that sort of salt of the earth, tie to the land, American freedom kind of mindset. And maybe it's enough to help him win again this year, but based on the recent polling, I'm not sure that that's the case. Right now, it's Biden plus two, Biden plus seven, Biden plus 10, Biden plus seven, Trump plus two, Biden plus seven. This one is within reach, but it is a very, very heavy lift. Maybe Trump can pull it out and surprise everybody again. If anybody can do it, it's him. I'm just telling you, 
This is going to be a tough one. Ohio. Now, Ohio is the state that just about always picks the winner. It's very rare for someone to become president of the United States without winning Ohio. Not because Ohio has that many electoral votes. It's just that that happens to be a pretty good predictor of the way that the race is going to go. This is usually a tripwire, not a deciding vote. So it indicates where the vote is going to go. It's not the, the final vote that winds up winning somebody the election. But right now, it is a true toss-up state. So that means, based on the recent polling, Biden plus one, Biden plus five, Trump plus three, Biden plus one, Biden plus one, Trump plus four. So as you can see, the polls in this state are all over the map. And it could go either way. But since it is this close, and it could go either way, again, I think you got to go back to the enthusiasm thing. Ohio goes to the president. And then finally, the last toss-up state, Pennsylvania. I predict, and I could be wrong, but I'm not, I predict that the Pennsylvania winner will be the president of the United States. Maybe I'm not right on that, but I tend to believe that I am. So Pennsylvania, I called this one for Biden two weeks ago. You may recall the graph that I was showing you. This is my map from two weeks ago, what I was predicting would happen. Pennsylvania, as you can see, is blue. It went very, very slightly for Joe Biden. That's what I thought was going to happen. And based on all the recent polling, that was the case. Here are the most recent polls. Trump plus two, Biden plus four, Biden plus four, Biden plus six, Biden plus five. You see how weird it is that you have all these pro-Biden ones and then all of a sudden there's a Trump plus two as the most recent? You see, you can notice that there is a trend here because you've got Biden plus seven, Biden plus five, Biden plus six, and then the closer you get to the election, it starts tightening up. Biden plus four, Biden plus four, and then all the way to Trump plus two. Now, the Trump plus two poll, maybe you could dismiss that as just being an outlier or a fluke. That's not unreasonable. But it's important to note that all of this trending towards Trump happened before you had several nights on end of violent rioting in Philadelphia. And as even Don Lemon and Joe Biden themselves have basically acknowledged, this is affecting the polls. The riots are causing voters to go toward Trump because they believe that he will handle it better than Joe Biden will. Because of that, I think, and this is my most recent map, I think that Pennsylvania has actually swung towards President Trump narrowly. But I think he wins it. And if he does win it, that brings him to 280 and you only need 270 to be the president of the United States. So right now, and this is a big step for me, I am predicting President Trump becomes the president of the United States tomorrow. Again, for the second time. However, for all of you that are still watching, before you start cheering and, you know, yelling and enjoy and jubilation, remember that I suck at predicting elections. <laughs> I, I really do. I, I dig into the numbers. I try to give you as good an understanding of them as humanly possible. I try to consider other things that the polls might not show. But ultimately, I usually come up a little bit short on elections. Last time I predicted Hillary would win, and I wasn't way off. I only predicted three out of 50 states wrong. But it was enough that I predicted the, the winner of that election incorrectly. So I'm hoping that that happens. And remember, I'm trying to be objective about this because two weeks ago, I was saying Biden was going to win it. I try really hard to give you what I think will happen, not what I think ought to happen. But right now, just looking at everything that I've seen, I think Trump wins this one. <laughs> A recent survey showed that the average American spends, I kid you not, eight seconds reading a news story before either commenting on it or sharing it. That means that most people are barely finishing the headline before spouting out an opinion on content they didn't actually watch or read. Therefore, if you are watching this and made it to the end of this video, congratulations. You are, as Bernie Sanders would say, the 1%. So now it's totally appropriate to like and subscribe.